tough world to do business in because if anything, 2011 has shown that just an economic recovery is not enough. For the world, crisis, commodity price rallies and new areas of concern have meant a new set of woes and in India, while CEOs grapple with the new waves of uncertainty, there are other issues to deal with. So amidst the hot economic debates in cold Davos, I caught up with the ITC chairman Vaisi Deveshar to find out what he was making of the new realities of soaring global prices and the flight of capital. You see the situation uh, on the global economic front is increasingly complex. Uh, it is no more a unipolar world, it's a multipolar world. And uh, so it's very difficult to predict uh, because the nature of problems now are global. So we need global solutions. But we do not have global institutions to, coordinate, to take coordinated action to be able to keep the economic situation stable and growing secularly. But you have the G7, which has become the G20. You have, you know, even at Davos, uh, risk, uh, you know, uh, uh, understanding apparatus which has been formed. Do you think enough is being done or do you think the world has changed in such a respect that things are moving too fast and you don't know what to do next? We know? have uh, intellectually comprehended the situation. We've articulated it, as I've done just now, that it is, it is complex. Uh, dimensions are global, therefore there has to be global solutions, global institutions. But action is uh, obviously lagging behind. Even in G20, you know, uh, what kind of representation, what kind of voice, uh, these are the issues that are really coming up. That if you want to really resolve issues, then there has to be uh, representations uh, of the democratic global society. So. It is going to be tough, uh, but in a poor country like India, inflation can be really lethal because you know most people earn uh, less than ten thousand rupees. It's a around. tax on the poor. It's a tax it's, on the poor. It's really. a tax on the poor. And, uh, do you think it's uh, the the global context? Because you know you you must be keeping a very close eye on the commodity side. On the global context, is it a weather-related issue because this year has been uh, bad, or do you think this is also a sign that you know this is going to be the flip side of growth? Every time India grows at eight, eight to nine percent, you will have inflation perk up. See, mineral resources uh, of our globe, if you look at the global uh, population and if everyone were to earn the way the U.S. population earns, then, uh, you know, you require many more planets like Earth. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there is a limit to availability of uh, mineral and natural resources. So, on one end, there is a sort of a diminishing uh, natural uh, capital and we're using it up. On the other, of course, there may be a lag in investment so that the uh, availability of commodities is uh, just a wee bit behind and uh, therefore speculation is, uh, is uh, carrying the prices uh, rapidly up or there is, a, there is an expectation of shortage of commodities and therefore people begin to uh, so hoard these commodities. So, but, at the, but, but nonetheless, uh, if the economy were to re-energize sort of global economy and come to a level, they're saying now it will be anywhere around 4% or 3 to 4%. But if you were to sort of catch up to what it was happening in 2008 or prior to the crisis at 5%, again there would be uh, an issue of the same kind of uh, high degree of inflation in, at the commodities end. So uh, supply side has to be resolved then there has to be innovation. But sadly, sir, from 2007 to 2011, we are going, we've gone through a cycle, and even today, there hasn't been anything that's changed, you know. I mean, if you saw 2007 and the, mo most of the food prices were very, very high. After that, every year we've seen sugar go up, you know, um, cr uh, crude oil prices go up. Every year, one particular commodity has flared up. What do you think the problem is in, in <coughs> India? You see, it's a matter of uh, the way you look at it. Firstly, it is a sign that uh, there is, uh, you know, growing, uh, if you, you know, if you, if you can call it growing prosperity or, or income levels are rising. So the moment income levels rise, uh, because the kind of subsistence level a very large sections of society uh, live in, uh, their first uh, consumption is towards getting more calories, getting more nutrition. So if you look at, even though we are the largest producers of milk, you know, it can get into a short supply. 
but we waste a lot because we don't have so much of infrastructure. So if there was infrastructure, cold chains, you know, much of it could be processed and saved. The other part, of course, is land productivity. Availability of land for the purposes of infrastructure and for the purposes of manufacturing is a very major bottleneck in India. And we know it because every time we want to set up a new plant or make or expand some uh, our, our factories, availability of land has become a very major issue. You know, very often people say that you have fragmented pieces of land. Of course, that is a that is a problem if you were to use the old economy methods. But if you look at uh, Israel, it's a desert. And in greenhouses, I've seen it in my own eyes, they, they produce uh, enormous amount of tomatoes and they have very little water. So agricultural uh, productivity uh, is very, very crucial uh, so as to release land for uh, creating sustainable livelihoods in the manufacturing areas and so that it can then trigger uh, services and create more sustainable livelihoods there. So therefore, reforms in the agricultural area are so crucial. See, when it begins to show up as inflation in agricultural commodities, it is not going to be something that you can switch on and off. Nor can you build, uh, you know, cold chains overnight, right? And it is not possible to, you can, you know, periodically there are knee-jerk reactions like Central Commodities Act, which is sort of an intervention which uh, interferes with market signals. And the end, it uh, actually gets you into a vicious cycle rather than gets you out into a virtual cycle. So the issue fundamentally is that we need to get our old APMC Act initiative that our Prime Minister set into motion, but the states have not adopted it with fidelity, and uh, they've done a sort of a half cock job. People uh, are converted into a licensing Raj, and we, 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 are, we have experienced it. So, so it, it has a lot of potential if you create competition at the doorstep of the farmer and give the farmers a lot of choice. Ultimately empowering him, getting knowledge, you know, uh, getting him to be able to use his meager resources more productively and ultimately get land uh, productivity up. And that remains the biggest challenge. Up next, lessons from what has worked. You know, some of us have demonstrated that you can actually bring dramatic change in, in the rural areas.